2019. So that's great. Yes. Live on YouTube. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday live, Gordana. Thank you. Hello. It's good to see you. Hi, everyone. Happy Sunday. This is such a beautiful Sunday today again. And I, oh my goodness, I'm so happy that we're here this Sunday and that we are going to talk about important things like how to get unstuck. We're going to talk about responsibility and willingness and integrity. Uh, and we're also going to focus a lot on how to heighten your frequency on demand. Uh, when we think that there's no way to heighten the frequency, how do we do that? Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to look at some antidotes to some of the negative feelings that can consume us in certain times. So, oh, I'm so happy that we're here today. <laughs> it really is. It's amazing. And um, I'm trying to share this on, on Twitter. So people mm -hmm. find it's the... Mm -hmm. This message, how I, I feel like, and we were just talking before we've gone live of um, mm. what I just went through, just the frequency. And mm -hmm. we are such powerful beings. We are yes. the most powerful beings, which is why the most complete darkness presents itself and tries to cover us and tries to, mm -hmm. and then we keep remembering who we are and just burst forth in this brilliant mm -hmm. light. And it's, uh, it's such a cool time. I have completely disconnected from anything political monet. The world keeps saying this will happen and say, no, it will not happen to me, not to me, mm -hmm. not for those that I love, not because mm -hmm. whatever I manifest shall be, it is so. And this is the, one of the things that I heard on this retreat. It just kept saying, it is so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is so. Whatever I say, it is so. Mm -hmm. and to bless people with the, the presence of beingness in the now. It is so. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't, don't worry. It is so, my dear brothers and sisters. We are the light. We are. We are the light. For those of you who doesn't know, uh, Lucas has been on an ayahuasca trip <laughs> the <laughs> other weekend. Yes. <laughs> So oh. he is in a good, good place right now. Uh, really and really yeah, I mean, you can share how that feels for those who haven't done it yet, me including, it's, it feels like it opens you up to certain th truths in yes. your reality where you know what is important and you know what is real. And I feel like when you say, well, this is going to happen and that is going to happen, that isn't real because it's a question of the future. There are no, you know, how can you tell the future? You, you, you don't sit there with a crystal ball. You're always, always present in the now moment. And if you're not focused on what's right in the now moment, then of course you might tap into the wrong frequency and create a future that is not compelling or that is not beneficial for you. But if you're present in the now moment, you're able to see what is real and what is true to you. And the only thing that is actually real is the love in the now moment and that the now moment is eternal when you're present in it. Mm. So not allowing your ego to push you into the future by listening to what others will tell you, this is going to happen in the future right. because they don't know. They, they are projecting. And if you don't like the projection, you say, no, I'm projecting something else. Yes. And I love how present you are after this ayahuasca trip. So it's it, beautiful. <laughs> it was, I've, done, I've done this um, healing modality, really. Uh, I don't know. This might have been the eighth time, ninth time. Um, and each time I describe it as it's like we are an onion. And a layer gets taken off each time till this for me was the very core. I've done a lot of other modalities, but this mm -hmm. allowed me to get to the very core mm -hmm. truth that I am not, I have no vibration of looking away or not being able to sit with or accept like the full for me in my story, utter darkness and take all that darkness mm -hmm. as a child um, and feel safe enough it was interesting. I'll, I'll share with you. Um, these men were telling me that I was safe when I was processing the deepest, darkest 
Mm. What I used to say dirty, I just felt so dirty. I always felt dirty. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get clean. And you know, we've done so much work mm-hmm. and it yeah, yeah, yeah. dirty a lot. Yeah. Um, and these men, these beautiful, powerful men were holding me and they were saying, I mean, I'm 6'3", 240. These men were 6'6", two, I mean, they were just big and they were holding me in. And as I shared everything, they're like, you're safe, you're safe. Mm. Mm. And it's the first word that I have on this. It's kind of blurry. You can't see it, but the affirmations that I have safe is my number one word. I have to remind mm-hmm. myself I'm safe because of the trauma that I experienced my whole life. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because I listened to them say, I am safe. Mm-hmm. And cognitively, I knew I was safe, but mm-hmm. I asked myself a question. When was the last time I felt effervescently floating, unaware of anything safe, just Mm. safe. And so I went and I sat with that question. I asked God, I asked the medicine, asked myself, when was the last time I felt safe? And I heard all the way back in your mother's womb. Mm. And I said, when in my mother's womb? And I said, three months. And then the minute she started showing, Mm -hmm. that's when the sense of safety was taken from me. Uh-huh. And it was incredible to know this level of depth because I knew it was true because I came out mm-hmm. breech and dead and belical cord wrapped around eyes blue mm-hmm. and the trauma just never stopped from the moment of coming into this world until I mm-hmm. realized I was able to take all that and I'm still here. Therefore, I am more powerful. We collectively mm-hmm. are more powerful than the darkness and mm-hmm. the darkness exists to remind the light its power. That's one of the clearest truths that came to me is that mm-hmm. the minute the sun says, I'm going to, I'm going to rise. The darkness just bows, bows in honor to it. It doesn't fight. It doesn't say, no, you're not. It says, <laughs> okay. Okay. Take your throne, be the light, mm-hmm. which is why Jesus, there's no qualification when he said, you're the light of the world. He doesn't say, if you do these things, believe these things, say these things, practice. It's not conditional. Yeah. No condition to the light. You're Mm -hmm. the light. Mm -hmm. All these projections, future projections, all the spell casting of Mm -hmm. manifestation, which is what I really saw as well. When you're saying this is going to, you know, the, the food shortages or this or that, or this, they're trying to get us because we are the light to manifest Mm -hmm. the curse, the Mm -hmm. lie, because whatever Mm -hmm. we say, it is so we will manifest Mm -hmm. whatever we speak, whatever Mm -hmm. we speak. And I, before I went on the, or before this weekend, I met with a colleague of mine and he opened up to me what his family is struggling with and his daughter struggling with. And I shared why I struggle with that as well. I had anorexia when I was 19 Mm -hmm. and he goes, well, how did it end? I said, well, I attempted to try to kill myself when I was age 20. And that was like, kind of snapped me out of this. He's like, And it was cool because he opened up this darkness to me and I was able to share like what I've gone through. And I said, you know, one of the things that I've learned is whatever great fear that we have, we have to combat it with a positive affirmation, which is why Mm -hmm. I have, I am safe, loved, free, abundant, powerful, because that's how I manifest and get Mm -hmm. back into my body. So I'm talking a lot. It's just, it's okay. (laughs) It was this week, this past weekend, and it was incredible. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah, it's a question of understanding the power in your your true power, your center of your being. As a child coming from an abused past, that is the first thing that you try to protect with all the layers of ego and fear and whatever it is that you're putting in front of you. So peeling them off the way you described it as an onion, it's almost like the lotus flower opening up because it's the same thing. Oh, it's, it's not like releasing it totally, but opening it up and allowing it to show itself in its beauty. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, like peeling off an onion. It was always hard for me to understand that analogy because it's like, there's something you need to peel off and get rid of. Right, right. It's yes, not- but it's not the truth. It's more like you need to allow it to open up and then look at it and see that there is beauty in the darkness and in the pain. There is always this beauty because it's a part of you. You can't, you can't chop it off and throw it off. It's a part of you. And your true nature is beautiful. 
So when you can see it from that perspective, it becomes beautiful. All the stuff that wasn't nice and beautiful and, 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 you know, all sugary, you can see their true nature (laughs) as a part of your identity and something that allows you to be who you are today and shine your light the way you shine your light. Because this is my experience. The more darkness you've been experiencing, the more light you can shine in a way, because you're able to, you know, open up when you realize that that is not who you are. The darkness is not, is not who you are. That is a part of your journey, but it's not who you are. You're the one traveling through it. You're not the darkness. So when you, when you reach this point where you have an aha moment and allow yourself to open up to that aha moment, everything is still there, but it, it's beautiful when you look at it. Yes. So the onion doesn't work for me, but the lotus flower works for me that's, because that's it's a different thing. Telling. Yes. Yeah. Because we are to, you're right. It's not to discard any of those things. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. We are not the, this is one, one of the things I've realized this weekend is the story of my life or our lives, all, all of our mm-hmm. lives. But for me, I realized I don't, I'm not speaking through that outer layer anymore i don't want to talk about no. the victim i'm not the victim yes. but also to mm-hmm. honor that i at a soul level chose all these layers so to honor to discard any of this or that's why we've mm-hmm. talked about don't kill your ego because ego is yes a- you can't yeah <sighs> it's the fully integrate and align who we are and and how mm-hmm. magnificent mm-hmm. of souls we are we are magnificent mm-hmm. and- and souls mm. you know i had a conversation with one of my clients the other day and she was like i can't feel anything anymore i just feel pain this is what she tells me and i say well what about when you're outside in nature can't you see the beauty there and she goes no i can't because it's all phenomenon it's nothing that it's no meaning in it mm. and and that's when i realized that the antidote to pain is beauty. So when you, can, when you are in a painful state and then you open up, this lotus flower opens up and you have an aha moment and you realize everything as a part of your being and yet here you are standing, you're not dead, you're alive and you can look at it, the beauty of what it is that you see it disintegrates the pain. Yes, yes. So the antidote to pain is beauty. Yes. Even that is why when you walk in nature, there is beauty in everything. Wherever you look, there will be beauty if you are willing to see it, if you are open to seeing it, if your heart is like this lotus flower opening up to the beauty. Mm-hmm. When you do that, it is the antidote to pain. I remember as a child trying to pinpoint where is the pain because I had a lot of pain in my knees while I was growing. Mm. Uh, I grew very fast between the ages of six and 12, mm. very fast. So my, my knees were hurting so much. I could hardly walk. There was a spiritual reason for this, of course, because I knew that I couldn't move. So it manifested itself as pain in my knees. Mm. And sometimes when I went to bed, I would... I would close my eyes and I would try to find where is this pain? Mm. Literally, you know, locate the pain in my knees. And I couldn't. Anytime I thought that, okay, I'm onto this pain. I can feel where it is exactly. It moved to some other place. And then it moved again. And I'm thinking it's not stationary. It's somewhere else. What is this pain? Mm. And as soon as I started to, you know, daydream or to chase the color points underneath my eyelids when I was trying to fall asleep, I could play around with colors uh, when I closed my eyes. I forgot about the pain. That's how I interpreted it to me. But it wasn't to forget about the pain. It was actually to remove it with beauty when daydreaming or, or seeing these colors underneath my eyelids in a way, distracting myself away with beauty, the pain, just disappeared in a way. So it wasn't real. The pain is 
and this might sound really horrible, but the pain is an illusion, a persistent illusion in your body. But when you start thinking about it and finding it, it moves. Yes. And yeah. the antidote to that is pain, is, is beauty. If you're willing to look at beauty, pain will be lightened or it won't be as harsh as it is when you sit in darkness and do not see beauty. So it's, it's a mind game almost. Yes. The antidote to it is, is beauty. Yes. And the way to find the beauty, this is one of the things I conceptually have understood this, have spoken about this, have talked about it, but felt it to the core this past weekend. The way to find the beauty is to look in the very core center of that pain, mm-hmm. look at it mm-hmm. and realize that is not the beast to destroy us. That is the mm-hmm. gift to remind us of our courage, our divine mm-hmm. nature. And that when we do go look at that, that's when the pain mm-hmm. will bow in say, mm-hmm. here's the beauty and all this. We yeah. are it- so averse to look. We don't want to look at pain. Yeah. Things hurt. Yeah. We try to numb it as opposed to look at it. You know, the, the way I see things is that pain is a signal. The the beneficial way of looking at pain is that pain is a signal reminding you that you are out of alignment. Mm. The alignment is beauty because you are light. You are beauty in a sense. Mm. So when you are not aligned with that, when you are believing some kind of untrue thought, either it has been you know, conditioned into you by society, parents, friends, teachers, whoever it is, mm. when you start believing the lies about who you are, mm. that is when pain sets in. It can be emotional pain, physical pain, whatever kind of pain it is. But it's still a signal telling you that you need to come back into alignment. So what is the antidote to that? Well, that is to acknowledge the beauty wherever you are, yes. seeing the beauty in it. And I love to look at it as the antidote, beauty as an antidote to a toxin in your body being the pain in a way. So giving yourself this beautiful version of yourself in order to release yourself from the toxins of being in pain. Yes. So it's, you can be stuck in pain, of course. And I'm not saying that all pain, I mean, you can have physical pain, It's not like you turn around and you say, I don't feel pain anymore, but it can help you release some of the sharp edges of the pain. If you start focusing on the things that are beautiful in your reality, and I'm not talking about superficial beauty. I'm talking about beauty in nature. You can find beauty in a, in a, in a puddle of dirt, you know, you can find it if you're looking for it. And this is where we come into this willingness Willingness is such a big thing. The willingness to want to heighten your frequency, the willingness to want to see who you truly are, the willingness to want to tap into your true power, Mm -hmm. to not allow the ego to pull you down and say, "Ah, I don't know, that's not the truth. You know, here's the truth. Look at this. You've been abused. your, Your path has not been light. So yeah, yeah, you're a victim. Stay in this. And the willingness to say, yes, I have been abused. Yes, my past was darkness, but my now isn't darkness and my future might be light. So the willingness to look at it, just to look at it, to not allow the pain or the fear, whatever negative stuff is going on, to stop you from looking at it. Because when you look with your awareness, it's the same thing as putting light on darkness, putting light on a shadow. What happens to the shadow? It moves away. It becomes afraid and moves away or tries to trick you or, you know, tries to, to, to not be in the light. Yeah. Yeah. But the willingness has to be there. You can't work with anything unless there is a willingness to look at it. So you must have had a lot of willingness this weekend to look at the pain, right? I did. I I tell my wife, one thing you can count on me is I'm going all the way. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going all the way. I came here to go all the way. I did. I came Mm. here to go all the way. Mm. Which is why 
I had to experience what I experienced because I did come here to go all the way. And for so many, I mean, even right now, even listening, whatever internal tape people are playing in their minds, like you say, willingness and whatever default tape mm-hmm. is playing, mm-hmm. what is she, whatever it is, will mm-hmm. manifest in their reality. So yes. it's up to us to go in and look at where the origin of our words, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be verbal out of our mouth. The mind manifests mm-hmm. just as powerfully as the audible. Oh, mind, yes. Right? Even so more. Listen, the, the universe does not hear what you only hear what you say. It actually knows everything you feel and think. Yes. That's the real frequency. Yes. So if your words are not congruent with what you think and feel, well, what you think and feel will be manifested, not your words. That's right. That's right. Without a doubt, it's a question of going in there and looking at what is the feeling that I'm that I'm having. And it's not wrong to be in pain. It's not wrong to be in suffering. We all suffer and are in pain at times. But it's a question of do I want to get out of this frequency? That's where the willingness comes in. When you start thinking, okay, am I willing to look at this really? And if you're not, then you'll stay in the frequency. For me, for instance, when I realized the antidote to suffering, it was an easy step to take. Mm. So what would you say is the antidote to suffering? Because I'll share what it is, what I found that it is. For me, it is surrendering. It, it's not, mm-hmm. it's, it's um, you on a live one time, I used to say and teach at the men's retreats, I reject fear and I receive love. And you're like, mm-hmm. whatever you reject, you're bringing in. And then Neville Goddard yeah. says, if we reject, um, if we direct, if we reject negative energy, we have called it in to fight it constantly. But if we renounce negative energy, we've detached mm-hmm. that it doesn't exist in our life. And yeah. it's to absorb. It's, it's like, it's a uh, martial arts. It's to redirect. Yes. It's to take mm-hmm. it all in and move it through versus mm-hmm. identify and keep fighting against it. So mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt, surrendering is a big, big, big part of it. For me, it was like when I realized that forgiveness and atonement is the antidote to suffering. Mm. So I will suffer as, as long as I do not forgive. Mm. Mm. And I realized that, well, what needs to be forgiven? Well, I need to forgive my parents for being the way they were. They didn't know better. I know that you don't like when I say they didn't know better because that is to look at, from my perspective, if I look at it, that is the truth. They did not know better. It's not from, it's not an excuse. It's just facts. If they knew better, they would do better without a doubt. So they did not know better, makes it easier for me to forgive. They were ego triggered all the time. Yes, because they were always doing stuff from ego. Well, that's also easier for me to forgive because it means that they weren't mean. They were just trapped in their own egos. So it it becomes easy for me to forgive when I start looking at it from that perspective. But the forgiveness has to be there in order to stop the suffering. And then I went even further than that. And I was thinking, okay, so I'm forgiving everyone, but I'm still suffering. Why am I suffering? (laughs) So I realized that I, I need to think in these terms. I need to say to myself and to the ones that I love, forgive me for all the times I have looked at you through my ego. I love you. And when I do that, no suffering is there. I forgive myself for looking at myself through my own ego. I forgive myself for looking at others through my ego. And I ask for forgiveness when I am looking at you through my ego. Because when I'm looking at you through my ego, I am not perceiving you. I am perceiving the surface only, which means that I will be in suffering because that is not what our soul is here to perceive. So 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 it's to put you out of alignment without a doubt anytime you are looking at things through your ego. And it's easy to look at things through your ego when you have been wounded Mm -hmm. because you need justice. You need to be seen. And that's the first step. You need to be seen. You need to have justice for what has has been done to you. 
And then you can look at it from a higher perspective, meaning seeing that everybody is ego triggered. Everybody is working from their ego. And the first place you can stop that is within yourself. So anytime you look at someone you love and you perceive something bad in them, it's your ego doing it. Forgiving yourself for looking at them through that ego, but also asking for forgiveness and say, I am so sorry for looking at you through my ego because I love you. And I, that's not how I want to perceive you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the suffering stops immediately. When you, when you say for me, it stops immediately. When I say this to myself, I go, oh, okay. Now I remember who I am. I don't need to suffer. It's the ego creating the suffering within me. Yes. yes. And forgiveness mm, works always. And I love that's a beautiful antidote to that kind of poison that ego can create, which right. is always the result is always suffering in some way. Well, there's it's as you're saying this so interesting. There's um because you know, like even in my TED talk, I don't use the word forgiveness because I don't think it's necessary, but it is necessary. But why mm -hmm. there's because there's two ways to look at it. I've always you can forgive as a victor, mm -hmm. or you can forgive as a victim two different ways to forgive yes two different frequencies two different results from mm -hmm. that and i love how you're seeing it you're when you can forgive as the victor like you're coming mm -hmm. back in your own power and i forgive for seeing you versus i have to forgive you because you know it's like that's victim, mm -hmm. and that keeps the power structure mm -hmm. not equal playing field mm -hmm. and i love that yes until we we cannot be free until we forgive we just cannot mm -hmm. cannot be free well yeah. And again, coming back to the willingness, you know, you can understand the forgiving on a, on a superficial level. You can say, I need to forgive in order for me to live freely. I need to forgive. Yeah, that's in your head. You need to do that. But when you are willing to go in the darkness and say, well, these people were horrible to me. Yes. How can I forgive? Yes. Yes. Well, you can forgive because they were not there their ego was but they weren't and if you want to look at the world from the core from the observer within you then you cannot look through the lens of a wounded ego it will always show you what it wants to show you so the willingness to say i see this the willingness to release mm. the pain identity Yes. The identification to the pain that was caused by whatever injustice you have been through. When you are willing to say, I, I want to release myself from that identity because it's no longer my identity. You see, the ego will fight. It will fight a war with you because it wants you to keep your identity. That is what ego is supposed to do here. But it doesn't make a difference for to ego if it's a, a bad thing or a good thing that is your identity or is in your identity it will try to keep anything it's for you to say yeah i know i went through this and that what that's a part of my past but it's not a part of my identity now and how i perceive the world now so the willingness to do this i i have found that 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 one was really hard for me because I do have an ego and my ego was fighting to keep me or to, uh, to, to keep my identity as a victim for a very, very long time. And I think that when you go through a thing like this ayahuasca and the, 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 the healing process, you, the ego the barriers that the ego create are loosened or lowered or they're, they're not there. Yep. So it allows you to see the truth without the fear of losing your ego or if, without the fear of losing your identity. Mm -hmm. Because ego will tell you, you are what you have been through. Mm -hmm. That is who you are. And that's not the truth. You're the observer of everything that is in your past and everything that is to come into your future. So you're the observer of it, but you're not it, which means that you can choose consciously or unconsciously what you want to bring with, your, with you into the future. 
and the willingness to look at what's in this these bags that I'm carrying, what's in them? Do I really need this thing? Do I need to take the chair with me on the plane to Australia? Or can maybe there's chairs in Australia, so I don't need to bring it with me. It's heavy. I can leave it here because it's not a part of my identity. It's just something that I've had in the room, but it's not me. I hope I'm making sense with this, what I'm saying, because why would you travel with all your stuff when you can travel lightly and trust that wherever you go, your identity will be intact, always. Leaving what doesn't work for you. It's so interesting where... I I had a a new coaching client and we talked um, this week for our kickoff call and she was raped by her father Mm -hmm. and she was going on how painful it's been that her father's never called her beautiful. Not one time has ever said that she was beautiful. And I said, well, of course he couldn't Mm -hmm. because he knows what he did. Mm -hmm. Say that you are beautiful would bring up to the forefront of what he did that he found you beautiful and she said he never can be around a boy he's never met a boyfriend i've ever dated and i said of course he can't because mm-hmm. he can't look at another man look at you it's mm-hmm. beautiful do you understand that this and she was like that makes so much sense i said of course mm-hmm. Because when you observe, when we can really detach and not be in the ego that I've never been told I was beautiful by my father, but understand, wow, yeah, I could never be told I was beautiful by my father because if he pulled that thread, he would disintegrate Mm -hmm. in all that he has Mm -hmm. done. It makes the observer the most powerful position Mm -hmm. in the universe. As the observer, there is no greater power. As the observer, Mm -hmm. it's like, for instance, I met my dad, I did a breath work session, um, holotropic breath work session, and it kicked off the DMT. And I had a psychedelic experience just through breath work. And I met mm. my dad's soul in the in-between. Mm. It's the only way I could describe it. It's like the matrix where they're in the train. Th- that's the in-between. They're not in the matrix. Mm-hmm. Like that's where his soul has been. And his soul was bawling and apologized to everything for everything. Mm. And it was there in that moment that I could heal with him and heal Mm -hmm. me. And all this comes back to the observer. Someone can Mm -hmm. say, well, that was real. It it doesn't matter. It's my observation of my Mm -hmm. reality where I can find those spaces to detach and not be in victim of you did this to me. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, we Mm -hmm. did a dance Mm. and you Mm. were never out of rhythm and neither was I Mm. now here we are to look at the dance is over and we can Mm. honor each other and say thank you for that dance because now Mm. I know who I am Mm. as you the only way we can know who we are is with the contrast which is why the ego is so important which is why the pain is so important which is why we live in this 3d duality existence because we are here to choose whether we will awaken and become the observer in the light or we will stay Mm -hmm. in the night like you said some people wake up in the dream and it's a nightmare some people wake up in Mm -hmm. a beautiful dream Mm -hmm. yeah i i I understand the the um... The concept of this is so beautiful because when you meet someone on a soul level, you know who they truly are. This is why I always say when I know who I am truly, I also know who you are truly because it's the same observer within you as it is within me. We're just choosing to observe different things. So for me, it's like when I can see my father as the soul that he is, I can say that I I am free and he is free and it's a dance and it's an agreement. But that doesn't mean that I need to spend time with his physical being, you know. That is definitely not what we are saying here. Yes, that is absolutely right. Because it's easier to forgive a person that you know is acting from their ego and their ego is not the conscious part of them actually. 
it is the unconscious part doing its deal here on earth, but it's not the conscious observer. So they're actually in pain all the time. That's one thing to recognize that. But that being said, it doesn't mean that you need to spend time with them. For me, it was easier to bring forgiveness to my relationship to my father when he passed away. I can even feel, you know, feelings of a wasted life, nostalgia, um, sad feelings when I think about him. I could not do that while he was alive. And I could definitely not do that while I was in his claws, so to speak. So what we're saying here is not like, oh, I found my parent in this on the soul level, and I hope that they will love me again. They do love you on a soul level, but maybe on in the physical level, they don't know how to express that. So you 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 can't stay in that frequency if you want to heal yourself. That's a part of the agreement, the soul agreement, that you might not be able to be in the same space in time. Right. That's right. That's right. So it's really important to understand that just because you have an aha moment and you see everything from its true perspective doesn't doesn't have to change them they might they are not having the aha moment you're having it and what you do with it that is your life path and how you use that information to heal yourself that is all that is important in in, in what we're talking about here yes and it untethers us that's why i love that book yes. soul. it untethers yes. us. It hooks us we become more free mm -hmm. even it really more free we're either free or not free i guess or it's not, yeah. but we do become yeah. in this process of more free, the more we can see and untether. Mm. Yeah. It's the emotional bonds. I talk about them. And also in our course, we talk about the emotional bonds that you have to your past and all the beings that exist in that past, including, I mean, your parents and, and everybody that has done you wrong. As long as you are exploring them in the past as they were the, there and wanting them to change in the now moment with you, you are tethered with emotional chains, actually. It's not even bonds, it's chains. And those chains are illusionary. Mm -hmm. And when you are able to see this from a higher perspective, you can see that those chains don't need to be there because you have everything you need within you. So you don't need their approval. You don't need them to see that you're beautiful, intelligent, wise, smart, kind, whatever it is. Right. They are not able. They are vibrating on the wrong frequency and cannot do that. Mm -hmm. So releasing that longing for being seen by them and validated by them, like your client saying, he never said I was beautiful and yet he used me which is a way of his brutal, horrific way of saying it maybe without saying it, yeah. waiting for him to say it will take her a lifetime. She needs to realize that this is, um, this, th that's the energetic bond that I'm talking about, which is an illusion actually. Wanting something from someone who is not capable of giving you it yes. is suffering all the time. Yes. Yeah. So I, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. We, I went, you know, I talked about that emotional intelligence course that I, I went through mm -hmm. and they would say, um, thank you. I know, like if someone paid you a compliment, they wanted people to say, thank you. Mm -hmm. I know. And it never mm -hmm. sat right with me. I'm like, mm -hmm. it didn't seem like they were receiving it. It was just like, thank you. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. But as you're talking, I'm like, there is this space where as the observer of even ourselves, we can look mm. at, with them and be like, wow, <laughs> I know it's amazing. <laughs> and that is a place yes. of such incredible yes. Yes. glory to stand yes. with the person and say, I, wow, <laughs> I get to be this, this is amazing. <laughs> and that place is such a beautiful space versus like, yeah. Thank you. I know it's like, no, yes. that, doesn't, that doesn't resonate with me, but. Well, thank you for, for mentioning this because I've always said it this, like the second version, I would say, thank you. I know. <laughs> no, it's I'm, yes. I'm surprised too, but if you can see it, then it's real, right? Exactly. It's almost always there. Exactly. And it's such a beautiful place to be in because you're, you're actually 
allowing yourself to see yourself from their perspective, not stopping their light by saying, I know, or ah, this old thing, it's nothing, to cut the light there, to put some darkness in between, but you go, let me see. <gasps> yeah, you're absolutely right. Look at me. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I love that. I love that. Oh, so cool. The, the willingness, this word willingness is such a beautiful, because the law of free will Mm -hmm. can never be broken and has never been broken, which means that mm -hmm. our souls saw everything that we would do because the mm -hmm. law of free will existed then as we entered and saw it mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And here we are saying the key to an aligned frequency is yes. willingness. Yes. And, and there then becomes, there is no such thing as can't. Yes, yes, There's yes. I will. Or I will not. Or I won't. Yes, exactly. But, you know, the willingness to me, and since we're talking about the antidotes to the negative feelings, mm. for me, stagnation, and I've been thinking about that word a lot because it's actually to feel stuck, you know, feel like, oh, I don't know, what can, what can I do? It, it, it's ego keeping you in the, the, the stagnation. And the antidote to stagnation is willingness. Because when you have willingness, well, then you're opening up and the road will always show itself to you, the path where you need to go when you're willing. Mm. It's the willingness that starts it all. And it's a question of doing it. You don't have to, you don't need anything from the outside. You can sit in your own dark room feeling like, oh my God, I'm stagnated. I'm stuck here. Mm. And if you start thinking about it, okay, so... I'm willing to see something else. I'm willing to see the possibilities. If you just start saying it, I'm willing to see the possibilities. I'm open to the, the possibilities in my life. Just saying it makes it easier for you to move, which loosens the stagnation. Yes. And it's an easy thing. It really is. When you start looking at these things where you start looking for the antidote to the the thing that you're feeling like i was thinking about loneliness because i i was in loneliness a lot when i was a child there was i was always alone and thinking what did i do to cure myself or to help myself when i felt alone well one word can sum it up and it's curiosity mm. so to me the antidote to loneliness is not to go out and meet people. It's the curiosity and the willingness to go out and meet people. So the curiosity, when I'm curious about things, like for me, it wasn't people, it was books. Mm -hmm. I would be curious. I would think, oh, so what are the stars made of? And then I would go and look. And suddenly I wasn't alone. I was talking to dead poets and dead you know, writers because they were there. I could read their words and suddenly I wasn't alone. Mm. So curiosity is the antidote to loneliness. Yes. Yes. As you're sharing one of these willingness, curiosity, and courage. Mm -hmm. For me, courage. It's like I was sharing with someone at the ayahuasca retreat. When we realize that we're the lion and step fully into that lion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if a pack of hyenas are bah, 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 doing what they're doing. It's like <laughs> the lion looks around like, mm. I'm, a, I'm a lion. Yes. Let me remind you yeah. of who I am. <laughs> when another lion approaches, yeah. then two lions mm -hmm. can look at each other like, we're lions. lions. <laughs> yes. And this matters yeah. so much because it takes courage to come mm -hmm. into that place, to be willing. But every single one of us are lions, mm -hmm. but it takes courage to come and willingness to say, what is the unknown for me to come into the fullness of myself? Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. sometimes is a masculine energy. Sometimes it's a feminine mm -hmm. energy. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's both, but yes. there is a willingness courage and curiosity hey, i have to know mm -hmm. what what's on the other side of this veil what's on the other side of the yes. veil? forgetfulness there's something mm -hmm. more and we can come in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 
it's yeah it, it is really it, it it is really so because when you are not willing or when ego tricks you into not wanting to look at things when ego says it's dangerous out there stay here it's safer here when it keeps you in this then then the thing that will align you might be anger yes and i've been thinking about this too so what would be the antidote to anger? Because anger is a good thing when it lasts for 15 minutes, but if it is prolonged, well, then it turns into something that will literally, you know, fire, it will, you won't stay alive in it for long. So anger has a purpose in life. And when you have been out of alignment for too long, when you, you are not willing, when you're not doing what you're supposed to do, anger sets in. And the antidote to anger, this is also something that I've been thinking a lot about because I was an angry child. <laughs> the antidote to this is truth. Yeah. Because when truth is presented to you, you stop being angry because truth will always be beneficial for you. It will always show you something that will allow you to grow in your consciousness. So the antidote to anger is truth. So if you are not willing to look at the truth, then anger will set in and truth will be revealed to you. Yes. 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 So there is no feeling that is actually wrong. It is only a signal telling you what, what kind of antidote you need. Mm. Like fear, you know that you need courage. That's the antidote to fear. Yes. But not many people understand that truth is actually the antidote to anger. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Whatever truth you're seeking, it, it, it might be something else for you than it is for me, but your truth on your path, what you need to see in that moment, that is what needs to be revealed to you and your anger will go away. Mm. So I think it's, it's important to go through words and see what is the, or the emotions and the words that we put, the labels that we put on these emotions and say, okay, so what's the opposite of this? What's the, what, is, what is it that, it that I actually need? Because every negative feeling is a sign of lack. Lack is something that is an illusion in the physical world. So which means that, okay, what is the illusion that I need to look at? What is it that I think that I lack? Mm. So let's say sadness, you're in a sad place. Well, the, the, the fastest way to realize what is the antidote to sadness, well, that would be laughter, right? So you're in a position where you lack laughter. That is why you're sad. <laughs> That's how it works in a way. If you can see the mechanism, and I'm using sim simplified examples in order to see what the mechanism is, like, it's not the first thing you think about when you think about anger. What is it that I need? What's the, what is the lack here? What am I lacking that is creating this anger within me? Yeah. Well, you're lacking some kind of truth, some kind of justice, some kind of, it, it is always connected to truth. Yes, yes. So playing around with this has given me a lot because I understand the mechanism and I also understand what the signal means within me and what I need to seek in order to, you know, lower the, 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 the sound of the signal in my head, so to speak. You, um, you know, uh, in my Ted talk, I say where love is present, truth will come forth resulting in yes. personal freedom. Yes. Yes. I thought about this, this weekend on the, on the medicine journey that I was on, because I would asked my rabbi friends, like I'd asked my friends that I thought were really learned, um, is there some equation? Is there, is there some universal equation that there's some variables? I felt like there was always an equation that I, I was here to figure out. Mm -hmm. And then I laughed to myself like, oh, I created my own equation where love is present. Love pl plus truth equals freedom. That's my soul's equation. Mm -hmm. here. And as you're sharing that anger needs truth, it is so true. And Jesus has the saying be angry and sin not and sin means to miss the mark. So be mm -hmm. angry, but stay in love. And what does love mm -hmm. allow truth? Mm -hmm. so, truth. Will yes. Always be an antidote. Like, yes, anger. yes. It's, it's so yes. cool. It is so cool. And 
it's so interesting like anger a- anger can manifest itself sometimes in some really tricky ways for me I was really angry, but I did not manifest. I did not present itself. You didn't couldn't look at me as an angry person. You mm-hmm. look at me as a nice person, but then I would go beat myself up when no one mm-hmm. can see. Like anger can manifest. Mm-hmm. In yes, yes. And it wasn't until I came into a place of love and a safe presence mm-hmm. where people said, "You can be angry, let it rip." And I will like learn <laughs> the very cool mm-hmm. core soul, like. <gasps> like the lion yes. roared. And then I was like, wow, I can be angry. And oh, I'm not angry anymore. Mm. <laughs> it was like, as soon as I, as someone yes. said, be angry, let it rip. Then the anger mm. went away. And I was like, oh, mm. that's all I needed. Yeah. Because maybe for you, the anger was, if you were angry, then your father would go berserk. So you had to keep it in, but you had a reason to be angry because you were controlled. So you keep it in. And when you allow it out, it's no longer there, so yeah. to speak. I've, I've had the same experiences, you know, when the thoughts I think in my head and the story, the narrative that goes on in my mind, the ego telling me stuff, you know, that isn't true. And I accept it without questioning it because I'm not really present when my ego is telling me the story, narrating the world to me, talking about everything around me and showing it in a, in a smaller version than it is. And then when I, for instance, when I sit with my husband and I'm in a low point and I start talking about the low point that I am having, especially when it regards our relationship. Mm. And I remember this one specifically, I was leaning my head towards his forehead and I was talking like, Oh, this doesn't work. And this doesn't work. And I'm so scared about this and that. And while I was expressing it, while I was putting words to it, I heard how silly it sounded when it came out because I was able to see it from his perspective and able to put some kind of logic, which I didn't put in my head. I put my ego's logic. It's highly logical when no one else listens. Mm. So when the words came out, when I manifested it, I realized how totally, utterly out of alignment this was. (laughs) And I started laughing. It, It looks... I started laughing and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is so liberating because the laughter released it. It showed me, oh my goodness, this is such an illusion. Why am I allowing this thing to narrate the world to me when it's not true? So, you know, sometimes allowing things to come out in a safe space, of course, you can hear that there's a lot of things I would question here if I heard someone else say this, but in my own head, sounds perfectly right right. every single time and it isn't so it's a good thing to let it come out you know i was i was thinking about one thing more before we end this beautiful sunday live uh you were talking about shame and guilt and these two are it took me some mind acrobatics to find what are the antidotes to shame and guilt And the antidote to this, the, 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 because it's a highly toxic place to be in the shame guilt is one thing. It it shows you, okay, I did something wrong. I can, I can fix this, but shame, shame is something different. It keeps you, it keeps you in such a low vibration and it takes so much energy away from you that all the potential that is there might be buried under the shame. Mm -hmm. So I think that, transparency you allowing yourself to say things that you were afraid if someone else sees them they might judge you for it the courage to do so the love that you feel is around you and trusting that no one will hurt you while you while you share this is the antidote to shame so shame It's hard to release feelings of shame when you're alone. You actually need to go somewhere where you can find people who you trust and share the things that you're afraid of to allow to the surface, but doing it with people that you really trust. Yes. Yes. So those two are really 
tougher. You can't solve them by yourself. All the other feelings that we were talking about, you know, the anger and, and, and the sadness and all the other ones, you can do them alone. You can find the antidote to it and then try to give yourself this. But when it comes to shame, and we all carry a lot of shame, I think that you need a safe space and the courage to be totally transparent, to show what it is that you're hiding. Because when you do that and the safe environment, all the people in that safe environment shine their light on it, it disappears. Yes. They, I think that's what you've gone through. 100%. This, and yeah. shame starts mm -hmm. with shh. Yes, shame. Shh. Over your mouth like this. Same. The word mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. equal as the act. Mm -hmm. So shame tells us to be quiet that we are yes. we experienced. Mm -hmm. so when we can feel safe enough. This is I I mean, I was telling Gordana before we started this live, I I sweated out the shame. That's mm -hmm. how it, it manifested purging the shame. I sweat. Mm -hmm. I it's hard to describe how much I sweat. It was wild, like I was swimming. Mm -hmm. And it came out. I knew what was happening. I knew the shame was because when people have sweaty palms or they feel mm -hmm. like it was like my whole body saying, mm -hmm. don't have to hold that, carry that anymore. And talk about mm -hmm. water holding the frequency and the vibration. Yes. The memory, the water holds memory. It, it's a structure that holds a memory. So if it, it literally transports it out of your body. Yes. I love that. And I was thinking about it, but I'm thinking, oh, we don't have time to speak about the water. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a beautiful thing. Water is such a beautiful thing to uh, talk about in these, in the, maybe we do it some other time, talk about the water, you know. And how it carries the memory and how we can use the water in order to cleanse ourselves because this is a cleansing that you're talking about. Yes. yes. Literal cleansing. Yeah. It's been so good. This is, I, I just, I love you. I love everyone watching. Thank you, everyone. We're doing this. We are ascending. We are together. All the, think of how much energy it takes for the darkness to try to trick us it's so yes. funny like, <laughs> okay yeah and we're like no we're here we are manifesting mm -hmm. the new earth that we want to create and mm -hmm. the more we remember the more we observe the more we heal the more we're willing the more we're curious mm -hmm. the more we are courageous it is like stepping into that lion mm -hmm. state just looking around like okay <laughs> yes, i see I'm... i see what's going on yes. here yeah, absolutely. I think the willingness again to be the light yes. in your own story and your own life, not to be afraid of being the light, not not to be afraid that you will lose your identity if you lose all the bad stuff that has happened to you. You can shift, you can have it with you, but not allowing it to be emotional garbage that you're carrying around. Right. This is something that happened to you, but it doesn't have to be your emotions in the now moment because you're a light, right. literally a light <laughs> photons shining here on earth. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful live. Thank you. I so enjoyed this. Thank you everyone for being here today also. Yes. Thank you. And we'll see you next Sunday, everyone. Bye. Yes.